I'd like you all to give a big welcome to Tracy Eileen joining us here. And her band coming down to play for y'all. Um, so we're going to be getting to know her a little bit better. She's one of the artists that we have performing here as uh, part of our Sunday night uh, jazz well, series, I guess to say. Um, I don't know if y'all know that we do jazz here every Sunday night, but we do. Uh, not this month, of course, because Buddy's playing, but uh, the rest of the year. Five to eight. Five to eight, it's a free show. And of course, if you do not happen to be in the area, you can always tune in online at buddyguy.tv, where, as you can see, we are streaming right now. So, Tracy. Yes, excellent. How did you first start singing jazz? Wow. Well, my father is a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. He's a drummer. And, um, and I've just I've sung all my life. I had my first performance at eight years old, third grade play. And, but I've been Which play? Is it, can you tell us? Was Wizard it? of Oz. Wizard of Oz, yeah. okay. Were you, were you Dorothy? <laughs> you know, I was supposed to be Dorothy, but I was so shy, I couldn't speak loud enough. Okay. But I was the best singer in the school. So uh, they decided to kind of rewrite the play a little bit, and they had Dorothy go to sleep. And then I came in as a fairy godmother in her dream and sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. But the good news is I got to be in all three paths, so. Oh, all right. That seems like they rewrote it to accommodate you. I guess you were you were a star of the school, huh? As... Then in third grade. Or yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And so it was straight from there to the big time? or? Um, was... No, um, I, I continued to sing in high school jazz band, college jazz mm -hmm. band. And I always uh, worked um, a, a corporate job, but I always continued to sing. So about five years ago, I decided I'm just going to do what I've always wanted to do, period. And that's sing jazz, and so that's that's here we are. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, um, what is it? I guess. What is it that you find compelling uh, about jazz as a genre? Um, I love the way it feels. I love that uh, you tell a story in jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the, mu the musicians, the artists, uh, each artist in the band, the singer or the musician that plays the instrument, we're all one, uh, we make a melodic sound together. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nothing like jazz. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I love scatting too. Oh, okay, a little bit of that <laughs> as well. That's cool. And now, uh, did you, is it, is it jazz only? Did you come up, I thought you, you came up through uh, some, like a gospel R&B stuff as I well? Know, or? Yes, yes. And in my singing mm -hmm. lifetime, I also sang in the choir. So I've been a, a, a gospel soloist. And actually, in the old Buddy Guys location, I used to sing in this gospel group called the Annettes. And we came one night, Saturday night at 10 o'clock, and we did about three gospel tunes. So... You know, gospel, jazz, R&B, they're kind of all closely related, so. You know, I guess I have to ask, since it just happened, um, mm -hmm. were you at all influenced or, uh, um, you know, interested in the music of Otis Clay? Because he was uh, a gospel and R&B singer who just uh, passed away mm -hmm. uh, last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great loss for the Chicago community. It was, yeah. Yeah, um, I like Otis Clay, but you know, there's so many artists in jazz and in R&B that have gospel roots. Mm -hmm. So you could probably, um, I would say almost all of them do at some point. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, who, who do you feel is uh, one of those artists that, that influenced you uh, most? You know, is there anybody you're drawing on where it's like, all right, this is, this is my shit? <laughs> um, I, I think I've I've developed my own sound sound, mm -hmm. but um, I have always loved Dionne Warwick, Nancy mm -hmm. Wilson. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Phyllis Hyman, who passed mm -hmm. on, and I, I love to do a lot of love songs. So, okay. Um, Ella Fitzgerald, of course. Her, uh, Dinah Washington. All right, so Sarah yeah. Bond. Yeah, yeah, all all great there, right? That's. Naturally. Now, um, you guys have a couple of tunes that, uh, that you're going to be playing for us. Um, why don't we go ahead and dive into the first one? I think you mentioned this is, uh, this is actually one of, one of my favorites. So this is a song by T-Bone Walker. Um, it's Stormy Monday, right? This yes. is, now, I don't know if people know this. This is actually one of the most covered songs of all time. Uh, it's been recorded more than almost any other song out there. Uh, and yeah, T-Bone Walker, uh, you know, anybody who's anybody stole something from T-Bone. Uh, <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> so yeah, if you would love to, would you play that for us? I will. Yeah. All right.
They call it Stormy Monday When Tuesday is just as bad Yeah Don't you know that they call it Stormy Monday Yeah, yeah And Tuesdays It's just as bad Thursdays, Thursdays, oh, so sad. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But the eagle flies on Friday, yeah, yeah. So Saturday we can all go out and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it fly for some of y'all today? You know that the eagle So Saturday we can all go out and play. But come Sunday morning, I am going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray for all the bad stuff I did on Saturday. Tuesday's just as bad. I know that they call it Storm and Monday. Oh, yeah. But Tuesday's, it's, mm, it's just as bad. Uh, that sounds terrific. You know, I feel like I'd be remiss not to ask uh, if you could introduce us to your band here. These fellas sound great. Oh, yes. Um, that beautiful sax sound you just heard came from Mr. James Perkins. Yeah. On guitar, we have Pat Fleming. Yeah. On keys, Chris Mayhew. 
and on bass, Paul Martin. And on drums, we have Malcolm Banks, who... <laughs> Malcolm Banks, everyone. Here he is. <laughs> 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 now, uh, you guys seem very comfortable together. Um, it's, I don't know if people realize necessarily that uh, in addition to the skills required to be a performer, there's actually you know, a whole other set of skills involved uh, in being a band leader. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you found came naturally to you or is that something that you kind of had to develop over time? Um, it did not come naturally. Um, a big help uh, was actually I studied at the Bloom School of Jazz. I can see how that would be helpful. That was very helpful. And so when I decided that I was just going to do jazz, do my passion, mm -hmm. I went and studied first. So they had a year-long course on going from amateur to professional, which included managing a band, you know, along with a lot of the other musical things that go along with, with singing jazz. So that helped. My dad helped a lot. And then uh, Pat, who doesn't like me to ever tell anyone, but <laughs> he's been a great music director for me, but it's, it's, it's a secret, so don't tell anybody. All right, well, we'll keep it on the down low. And actually helped really a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you get connected? Uh, were, um, how did you meet these fellows? Very interesting. Um, when I first finished at the Bloom School of Jazz, um, the, um, uh, the owner of the school wanted to help me transition. And so um, he put together the band for me. So I was blessed to have some fabulous, awesome, very talented and experienced musicians right from the very beginning. Wow. So, um, and when was that, Justin? That was about, what, five years ago? Okay. About five years ago. And, um, and so Paul and Pat have been with me since then, and I've had the wonderful additions of James and, and Chris um, since then. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've performed here recently, yes. um, and uh, you had uh, Bad Sneakers down here Thank with you, you as well. You want to tell everybody about Bad Sneakers? Bad Sneakers is awesome. Uh, that is actually Paul's band, and uh, Bad Sneakers <laughs> is a Steely Dan cover band. And if you love Steely Dan, you definitely want to check out Bad Sneakers, and they play at various uh, venues around the city of Chicago. So, yeah, that was nice. Okay, cool. Now, uh, I think in just a minute here, we're going to open it up and take some questions from the audience, if, if we've got any out there. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, jazz has a special relationship with blues. They're very similar in a lot of respects. You know, I mean, uh, Stormy Monday is, you know, is the blues standard, although it's got more, some jazz kind of changes on it. Um, do you feel like there is a, do you feel like there's a difference that you can tell, you know, what separates blues to you from what's jazz? Mm, definitely. Um, there's a, a, a blues sound and, and different chords that are blues chords. Mm -hmm. um, some songs transition well, like Stormy Monday. Another one I do is uh, Black Coffee, uh, which is, uh, I think, a really good uh, middle-of-the-road tune between jazz and blues. Um, blues, the thing I love about blues is that it always tells a story. It's some heart gut wrenching thing that has happened. And um, those are the, the types of songs I'm, I gravitate towards in jazz, too. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right on. Now, let's see. Do we have any questions out here in the audience? We got one in the back? That, no, she's just waving. <laughs> All right, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Now, I'm curious, uh, do you, what, are, what are your plans? 2016, we've just entered, start of the year. Mm -hmm. do, you have, uh, do you have big plans for this year? What's going to be coming along? Um, well, I have a, my uh, freshman CD that's been out for about, I guess, three years. Mm -hmm. And so I plan to And what's finish. that called? It's called Love's Journey. Love's Journey. And, and where can people find that? Uh, you can buy it uh, online. You can buy it here at Buddy Guys. And there's a tune on there. Um, actually, this tune is going to be on the second t uh, 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 CD called Why Did I Say Yes? And okay. it's available on iTunes. Okay. Yeah. So I plan on finishing the second CD in 2016, um, doing some more traveling with the band. Um, those are the... Those are the highlights? Yeah, those are the highlights. All right. Now, you, you mentioned that uh, you're going to be working on this new album. Um, is that going to be original material, or is that going to be you know, jazz standards, a combination of things? Uh, what are you bringing together there? Uh, it'll be a combination mm -hmm. of um, a couple of original tunes. And I tend to sing a lot about love, love that goes good, and 
not so well. And you know, as long as it's connected in some way, um, I'll, I'll do those kind of tunes. But it'll have a, a few standards as well as about three original tunes. Now, uh, have you always been writing your own music as well? Is that something that is new to you also? Or uh, how did that come to be? Well, you know, it's interesting. I've, um, I've always been a writer. Um, but as far as writing music, I started that about five years ago mm -hmm. as well. And it's interesting how melody comes into your head. I can't write the chords, but you'll hear the melody and think you heard it. Did I hear that somewhere before? And you really didn't. Um, but then uh, my band of musicians, they will translate that for me into sheet music. We work on it. Everybody puts a little input into it. So it's kind of a collaborative process yeah, there. Yeah. That's cool. And do you find that you get uh, the music first, or do you find that you start with the words? Mm, I think uh, it, both, and sometimes they come together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just the chorus, you know, and then you build around that. Um, but one of the things I had to learn in writing music is that you have to be willing to reveal yourself and tell, you're like, do I really want people to know that about me? <laughs> and you have to just okay, yeah, I'm going to go on and do it. you got to let it all hang out. So I think um, the more authentic you are in your writing, then people can really connect with it. So the best things are going to be the ones that make you uncomfortable. Uh, that would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got a song that uh, you just said is going to be on the next album that you're going to be playing for us as well, right? So this is one of your original tunes. This is one of my original tunes. Now, you said that uh, you have to be revealing something about yourself when you write your best material. What is this song going to be revealing about you? Um... This is about a, a relationship that didn't go quite as planned. And, uh, Which would be most of them, right? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, I think, has, has had something like this happen before. And you, you kind of, you're in a relationship, you break up, you're like, okay, God, that's over with, thank God. But then somehow you get caught up in it again. And you're like, how did I get here? So it's, it's, it's that. It's about that, song. okay. <laughs> and what is the name of this song? Why Did I Say Yes? Why did I say yes? All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, why did I say yes? I think what we know, we know why we said yes. <laughs> Then I saw you and accepted your invitation to spend time And before I knew what happened I was back in the same old grind Why did I say yes when I know you're not the best man for my life? I don't want to be your wife When I should have said no, I say it once again, baby. I have got to go. You hurt me with your words, make me feel like less than I deserve. You say you love me, then you don't. You say you will, and then you won't. Round and round we go on this roller. The show. I'm staying on my high and I am done with all the loves. Why did I say yes when I know you're not the best man for my life? I don't want to be your wife. Why did I say yes when I should have said no? And seeing that there is no way This situation is so very clear to me This thing that we call love was never ever meant to be yeah. Why did I say yes when I know you're not the best? Man for my life I don't want to be your wife Why did I say yes When I 
should have said no I'll say it once again, baby I don't wanna be your wife. Why did I say yes when I should have said no? I'll say it once again, baby. I have got to go. before by the way just needed to yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm guessing we got a couple in the audience um, now we we almost have to go actually ourselves at this moment we do have to get out in just a minute and, uh, and make way for uh, Mr. Eddie Taylor Jr. and Harmonica Hines we're gonna be coming up and playing the dinner set for you um, but before we do that I guess uh, a couple of things first where should people go to find out more about you where you're gonna be playing you know when you're gonna be back here at Legends all that good stuff sure. I'm at Legends every second Sunday uh, from 5 to 8 for the jazz set, every second Sunday, 5 to 8. Um, and then and for other venues that we're playing around the city, my website is tracyeileen.com. And that's Tracy with the E, T-R-A-C-Y-E, Eileen.com. Cool. And you know what? Uh, do you think you guys could do one more for us, actually? Just play us out here? Sure, absolutely. Sure. Uh, we're going to do Edith and the Kingpin, a Joni Mitchell tune. Oh, okay, cool. Which is kind of jazzy. All right, well. <laughs> Actually, um, it's interesting. That tune, um, the, the version we do, or this is similar to a version that was done by Herbie Hancock and Tina Turner, if you can believe it. A really interesting. Um, I didn't know that they had collaborated, actually. I, I didn't know either until that tune. <laughs> I heard that tune. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, there we have it then. Let, let's, let's check it out. The big man arrives. Disco dancers greet him. Plain clothes cops greet him. Small town big man, fresh lipstick glistening. Sophomore jazz. From victims of typewriters, the band sounds like typewriters. The big man, he's not listening. His eyes hold Eden, his left hand holds his right. What does that hand design that he? So tired, yeah, yeah. Eat it then the ring, the past of the girls are covering. The man with the diamond ring is purring. All claws for now withdrawn. One by one they bring his renegade stories to her, his crimes and his glories to her. In challenge they look on. Women he has taken grow old too soon. 
Second Sunday down here at Legends starting in February.